What's up everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. I'm Carl Fisher. I am in Western Australia at Bennett's Customs. So stoked to be here hanging out with my buddy Jordan from Canada. This car also came from Canada. This is his 1929 Model A Roadster that he's been working on. Definitely check out the build on Bennett's Customs YouTube channel. I am working on, in this video, a ton of different techniques to try and repair this door. I'm talking about this thing is crumpled. It is so rusty. We've done um, hammer and dolly work that I'm explaining during the video. We've got heat shrinking. We've made special tools to do all kinds of work during it. So you'll see me make all the tools that I'm using to separate the door skin and repair the rust on the bottom. He just got a bunch of great new tools in the shop from Machinery House. So I got to play with some of these, which I'm also gonna be playing with Machinery House while I'm here in Australia. So really cool, really, really cool stuff. We've got uh, profile dies we made specifically for the door. We've done linear stretching with the dies from that power hammer. We've got kick shrinking going on, uh, welding, all kinds of stuff in this video. It's really packed. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. And don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. Let's get into it. All right, well, I'm about to get cracking on this door. It's pretty pretty bad. It's got a lot of rust in it. Uh, it's got big dents in the inner. First things first, we're gonna have to peel the skin off of it, have a look at where it is. Uh, we're gonna take some templates of the, uh, the bead here so that we can make a profile on the power hammer. And make that. We're gonna use a little bit of a shrinker stretcher, get ourselves this, this, and this that whole bottom to try and repair it so like I said first things first we're gonna go along find out where all the spot welds are I'm gonna turn this light on you might be able to see some you can see eh, you can kind of see it the little pinches right here there's one there one there one there one there knock all those off should be able to pop the skin off with a little bit of heat bend the uh, tabs out the flanges out, get the skin off, let's get, get to work. Okay, so right now I'm trying to peel this skin off. I've got the uh, spot welds kind of ground away. They're kind of random all over the place, but I need to be able to get in here to peel this edge off. So I'm gonna heat it up a little bit on the edge and, and just keep working it all the way down. This is a little bit too wide. This is a little bit too wide. So I'm gonna make myself a little tool right now. It's gonna make my life easier. I'm gonna spend five minutes on it and it's gonna help me unzip this skin.
What do you figure, Kaba? You gotta peel it off like the band aid, mate, and just tear it off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to ruin Jordan's uh, Jordan's door, so uh, I think I'm gonna make another little unzipper out of this chunk of old screwdriver because this is a lot less clearance to be able to get that unzipped than this tool. This thing worked pretty good. Got half of it off. This looks like part of a junkyard, but uh, and get this off and then try and peel this out. This is this is actually zipped, zipped right here. So that's folded right 180 degrees under. And under this sheet is a flange 90 that is actually 9090 and zipped in there. So I don't know. I usually don't unzip that stuff. I usually just cut it off and put a new skin on. But we're trying to trying to save old tin here, so we'll have to give it a go. All right, here's where we're at. We're separated. We got this piece. You can see really kind of how much damage it has. It does have a bunch of dents, but I'm not worried about that because we can get, we can pretty much get any dent out. So mostly it's just this bottom part of the door that's totally effed. So we're gonna have to uh, work on that. Top part of this skin is fine. Once again, tons of dents. It is pretty, it's pretty bad, but uh, in in the interest of saving good old tin, we're going to fix it. So probably going to end up replacing just the bottom part of this skin. And once again, we're going to work on all the dents to try and save the patina. Like the Roadster is a sweaty, beautiful, worn-in machine that's going to be so sick. Yeah, look at all the sweat. Look at all the sweat up there. You wearing deodorant, Jordan? No? Yeah, you stink. Yeah. All right, so... Um, now I'm going to just kind of clean up some of the edges. We're going to bang some dents out, try and get these pieces looking all right. And then uh, after that, we'll start fixing the rust. Okay, where are we at right now? So, built a few tools along the way. Love making tools. Um, we made this just a little T-dolly to knock in and uh, straighten out these beads. They were shallow and, uh, and, and making this too deep of a curve. So, uh, me and Kaba over there. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we knocked this out. So we, we did get the beads looking pretty good, nice and deep again. 
tried a little bit of heat shrinking to try and bring that down. The heat shrinks didn't really do much. It was mostly the deformed bead from being all tacoed around. Um, this piece is looking a little better, but has, has a little ways to go. We've got, uh, you know, some dents and creases still in it. But the nice thing about this old tin is it's got maybe a little bit more carbon in it, so it seems to, to not have as much spring. Like you just kind of, you can tap it around and it kind of wants to stay where you put it. So I'm gonna go and try and do this all by hand. We're just gonna stick dollies in the vise and, uh, and just kind of go over it all, massage it out. Once I'm happy with the shape of the inner skin of the Roadster door, I'm gonna start figuring out how to repair this stuff. Um, obviously there's like this quite, quite a thick bead there. I would like to make a profile die for the Metal Master power hammer to, uh, to bang that out. But I think what is gonna happen is we'll make this Z shape and then maybe be able to turn it around the corner a little bit and then run it through some profile dies. That's just, that's just my idea, I don't know. This will be the second time making dies for a, a reciprocating hammer for this type of a um, repair. So uh, I'm just gonna keep going, knock it out. Hi Jordan! Good morning. <laughs> uh, we're getting ready for the meet and greet tonight too, so shop's looking good, but uh, I got a couple hours to bang out this uh, before we see everybody. So uh, hammer dolly time. Okay, so when we've got a crease like this, this is creased up, this one's creased down. What I'm always trying to do when I'm hammering and dollying is you, you want your dolly on the back side, supporting the low spots. Hammer or slapper on the top, hitting the highs down. So basically the dolly's not touching the hammer right now. It's, it's gonna be shocking the low spots up as you're hammering the high spots down. And I'm just gonna keep working it like that. I've got a uh, couple different slappers, a couple different hammers, dollies. We're gonna go over everything and try and just get them, uh, get them all straightened out. All right, so you can see kind of right here. Well, first of all, we made, made a bunch of progress. I think that we got 90% of the uh, dents and creases out. Um, it's looking pretty good, but we have some oil canning right here. So what that means is right where a crease is. So that crease has stretched the metal, um, giving it more surface area. Although we tried to flatten it out and our hammer hits have also probably added to that squishing the metal and creating more surface area. That's what creates an oil can, that effect. It's a really tough thing. Like everybody asks me about oil cans because like, how do you get rid of them? Well, you can't get rid of them really unless you do a bit of shrinking. So we need to either heat shrink or use a shrinking disc or, um, or whatever to get that oil can out. So um, there's gonna be some welding in here and there's gonna be more distortion added to this piece, but I would like that oil can to be out of there for when we actually put the piece in and start tacking it up once we've made it. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a shrink here and see if we can't get rid of the oil can. The rest of it looks pretty good. There's a little bit more, hand, like if we really wanted to, we could hand planish this thing perfect, um, but it's 90% it's right now. So I just wanna keep going because I don't really have a ton of time here. Um, yeah, I'm gonna shrink that. Then we're probably gonna either go to the outer skin and hammer and dolly the outer skin at the same time, or I'll just start making this bottom bottom part of the door. A couple ways of heat shrinking with a torch. One way is that you heat up a little red dot and uh, and the heat expands. So that little, 
that little dot is soft because it's hot and because it's expanding what's happening is that it's actually pushing the metal into the cooler metal around the dot so the metal around the dot is a little bit harder and because the dot is soft and expanding it's actually pushing the metal the warm metal into the cooler metal physically making it a little bit thicker around that i mean it's a very small amount but that is what's happening is the heat is expanding and pushing the warm metal into the harder metal around it another way to do a little bit more aggressive heat shrink which is probably what i'm going to do because i know this is a pretty pretty heavy duty crease is that uh, when it expands from the heat um, you'll see it kind of raise up a little bit or push down depending on the orientation of the panel but the idea is to uh, hit that little mountain down and that also pushes extra material into the surrounding cooler metal and then you kind of hammer and dolly it while it's warm lightly so that uh, you can just kind of get it flat again and and that really does shrink it quite a bit and then you cool it down obviously cooling it down also brings everything back together because heat expands and cool shrinks um, so that's that's how we're gonna do it okay so I'm gonna pop it up that shock kind of pushes that material into itself Cool it off. You'll see, still have lots of oil can. It's another big crease right here. Oh, most of it's gone actually. There's a tiny bit left and I'm kind of feeling that it's right around there. There we go. No more oil can. Oh, that's a lie. Still a little bit. Once I shrank that down, it told me it needs a little bit more right here. This is for sure good. That did a lot actually, so we just need one more in this general vicinity. There we go. Okay, we are good. Well, 
Now it feels like there's a little bit here. Well, I'm not worried about down here because that's going to be cut off, but this, this is done. Okay, so I'm gonna try and figure out this situation. I got some steel here. Uh, there's nothing left to really go off of here. Like, I'm not gonna get any information off of that. So, I'm gonna go off the passenger door. We'll make a bit of a template of this right here. It's a driver's door in Australia, mate. Oh. In Australia, that's a driver's door. Oh. God damn, Henry built that many cars and he wanted to be different, so he went over there instead of kept it where it was. <laughs> Okay, this is the driver door. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I'm gonna make my template off of this. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break this edge and then I might uh, stretch it a little bit along the linear on this to get this slight curve that you can see. This, this isn't straight, it's got a curve here. We'll do that as step one. I think step two, we'll be making a profile die for this beautiful machine right here. So we'll knock this bead into it while it has its little bit of a stretch. And I think we're going to have to tip after that's done. We'll have to tip the little flange over. I'm going to do it all in a straight line because I don't think I can turn this corner. That's a lot of shrink and stretch and stuff happening right there. So I'm going to make a big straight piece and then I might trim a little bit of it out so that I can get this corner around. This might be a little bit of, a little bit of messing around, but we'll start with Doing that, knock the bead in it, and we'll see where we go. All right, so linear stretch dies on the uh, Metal Master look good. They're working pretty sweet. Look at that. Look at that. Ha. Not bad, huh? Hey, Kaba? Hey, a bit like David Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> With the jokes. Okay, let's have a look. Show you guys how I'm um, kind of eyeing that up. We do have a nice gap all the way. We've got the flow of the sub rail. So I, I'm happy with that, we're done with that. Let's uh, move on to the next step. I'm either gonna turn this flange next or I'm gonna knock this bead in next. I'm not sure. I'm gonna think about it, it'll be a surprise.
stretching my buttocks. We had a great night with uh, the meet and greet. Shop still intact. We all had a ton of fun. This guy, this guy. We're back on the roadster today, and uh, I wanted to show you what I screwed up on this on this little panel here. Um, right before the meet and greet, I was working on the um, working on using the bead roller to tip the flange. And then I was trying to control the amount of. Uh, um, I guess the wave that I showed you in this panel was because we linear stretched, because we linear stretched this to get this curve. Um, I was shrinking and I shrank a little bit too much on the flange trying to control it. I can actually see it and feel it right here that we took some of our um, linear stretch right out of it. So I'm gonna have to try and get that back. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna flatten this flange out again, put the stretch back in it and then not use the shrinker until we've got that edge turned. Uh, I think that's what I'm gonna end up doing. So right now I'm trying to just kind of reverse a mistake. So I'll probably um, try stretching out this again. I might have to knock it flat, like I said, and then uh, hopefully we can turn that flange into it and continue as I originally expected. <laughs> I wanna put, turn the flange in and then make the profile die so we can knock, knock that in. So that's what I'm gonna get going. Okay, well I did get some of the bow back in there, the David Bowie, but it's not quite enough. <laughs> it's not quite enough. So right in the middle, I know I did like a pretty serious kick on the shrinker. So I'm gonna just flatten out this one spot, stretch it again. I know it's just right in the center. I can see the flat in there. I don't know if you guys can or not, but uh, the flange did get turned. It needs a little bit of tuning. It's a little bit kind of, but it's gonna be fine. So right now, I'm just gonna probably pop this dolly out. Because I need the stretch in here, that flange has to go flat in that spot. So I'll probably maybe even just use this. Try and get it out of there. Temporarily. Kind of work it flat. I know it looks like you're just kind of messing it all up, but you gotta do it. So I'm gonna go step on the shrink or on the stretcher, get a little bit into there. We'll put that flange back and see if we're all right. All right, 
So I got I got some of it back in there, and I and I think that well I got all of it back in there, but I think that I might not have had enough right in the beginning. Like it's it's really close. So um, I'll probably end up remaking this piece, but I'd like to make the profile dies and just kind of use them on this tester anyway. Maybe I can learn a little bit more about the piece I'm trying to make. Um, Jordan is getting the body down right now. He wants to do some steering and stuff. Steering column, I think, today. So he's got to sit the body right down on the frame, get rid of this gap. That's what he's doing right now. Say hi, Jordan. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so there it is. We've got, we've got it turned. We've got, you know, some David Bowie back in it. But I'm not 100% happy. It's about an eighth of an inch away um, in the middle. So it could use just a little bit more. But perhaps, perhaps, this is just a thought. I'm sure people yell at the screen and tell me I'm wrong later. But uh, if I make these profile dies, maybe after I run it through, might, maybe it'll stretch it a little bit. I don't know. Um, maybe if I keep one edge a little bit tighter than the other, maybe. Maybe there's a save in this panel. But honestly, anytime I think that I'm going to save something, I always end up remaking it because it's usually easier. So um, I am going to make these profile. Um, profiles for it first and then uh, just give it a shot and if not then I'll quickly remake the second panel way better the second time anyway let's get back at it Okay, I just made this template here that's a little bit more accurate and something that I can actually back a scribe onto so that I can get this profile. This will be the top, so this will be the side that you see of the sheet metal. So I really, really, really want this to be as accurate as possible. Hence using the scribe and a little bit of Sharpie for my die. And then once I've got this profile looking beautiful, I will scribe this onto the other side and then we'll have we'll have both sides of course i'll have to leave a small gap in between for the thickness of the sheet metal for it to work properly that's kind of where this this gets a little tricky Okay, this is what I got. Did my best to kind of eyeball a bit of a gap in here for the sheet metal. I believe it's one mil that we're using. Yes, I'm in Australia. That was metric. Probably never hear me say that again. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna give them a try. I didn't do full polish or anything. I just went onto the uh, Scotch Bright belt on the belt grinder. And I'm pretty sure that it should be Decent. So I'm, I'm going to give this 
piece that I'm not 100% happy with to try. See if we can't save it, and if not, we'll make a new piece and tune up the die. Try again. Testing, 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 testing. Could if I lowered it, possibly. I don't know. I don't know. Creepers, creepers. Oh, tightening, loosening. Tightening. I mean, it's doing stuff. Dude. <laughs> How cool is that? That's like... It's like on from, from zero to cool. So I mean, it's, sick, man. That's pretty cool. Punch. So you've just left majority of it flat and just kind of beveled your edges, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Rather than making it. I think if it was totally round, you'd get like a linear stretch effect. Yeah, I reckon so you'd So you kind of keep, keep a little bit of a flat spot to spread the load. That's, yeah. I think that's a lot of what's important with the dot is to spread the load on it so that you don't have like a tight spot. Yeah. One tight spot in the middle and like the whole thing will probably torque, right? So that's even like all the way around basically. Yeah.
Dude. I feel like it's putting in a bit a bit of curve. No, or I mean like I had, straight? well I don't know. Like it might I feel like that maybe is putting it like I need a little bit more yeah. curve in it, like half like an eighth of an inch more if I'm being picky. So I, I might be getting it actually. I tried to leave it a little bit tight in here just for that. Like if if it was a little tight in here, it'd yeah. kinda help us, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh Dude. I'm like thoroughly impressed right now. <laughs> What about for, so when you're setting this now, are you just gonna do it by eye, like? What do you mean, like when you, So tight? if you bring that stroke down, yeah. you still want the thickness of that to be Well, because it's there. got a spring in it, I don't know. Yeah, you're right. You know, and right. the deflection of the machine and whatever, I think that you just kind of go until, until it's got what you want, really. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, I mean, right here, yeah, like, we, we're just at the thickness of it right there. Yeah. So, you know. We'll have to see. This might be the last pass. It, it actually, like, we should probably check it on the door after this pass. Yeah, yeah. To see how it is. Holy cow! Yum, 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 yum. <laughs> nice. Okay, well. Quickly shut the door. Oh my goodness, that worked way better than I thought. I totally thought this piece was garbage, but it tuned the whole thing up. Like, this is beautiful now. Like, it's it actually is really good. Like, I do not need to redo it. It fits the profile perfect. Uh, yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Chef's kisses. Chef's kisses. So good. I can't believe that uh, that it worked out that good. And it's, and I kind of made those dies sort of quick. I didn't polish them either. But man. Either lucky charms or uh, we almost know what we're doing. Actually, why don't I show you on the actual driver door. In Canada, this would be passenger door, but... Uh... <laughs> okay. This is the bead we're trying to do. Right there. And I mean, it fits like really, really good. Unreal. I'm not sure exactly how we're gonna turn these corners and fix the area here. We might have to do separate pieces. Not totally sure, but I'm gonna think about it and then you're gonna see it. All right, so that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I've been thinking about it and I think I'm going to cut it where it's flat, replace that piece, and then separately make the corners. Um, I will still use some of this profile to get it to come around, I think, but having that bead turn that quite sharp corner, I might have to make myself a little dolly to kind of tune it up and, and get it over there. Also, the angle of this versus the angle of this is actually different. So making this piece into that on both sides might be a little bit more work than it's worth than having it in a few different pieces. So I'm gonna start with that. I'm gonna get this piece tacked in there and uh, go from there.
Okay, so this kind of worked out really good. Just kind of smashed it into the same die, got that piece on, and then uh, I cut the outer piece. A Little bit of stretching on the edge, obviously, well, a lot of stretching on the edge to get that curve. Did have to kind of manipulate it, stick it into the shrinker to get some shrink here because there is a slight angle in on these planes. But we are getting pretty close. I'm just about ready to get that in there. I might even run it through after I get it tacked just to uh, just to get it um, kind of identical profile. I think I could just run this through the hammer once I got it tacked, but I'm stoked. Like that's that's pretty cool that uh, that we can make that. Coming along, Jordan's happy. Yes. Uh, he hesitated there. He's happy. I'm happy. <laughs> Beep. No, I'm happy. Yeah, where's he at? got yeah. his 32 right hand drive column in there. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It's got the windshield mocked up. That thing needs a haircut. This thing does need a haircut. Like just, just take it right off. True. <laughs> I love getting bugs in my teeth. <laughs> Well, Jordan, what a great time we've had in the shop. We certainly have. Got quite a bit done. Didn't quite get as far as I'd hoped because it's actually kind of a complicated repair. Uh, three handmade tools. One, to help knock this bead straight. Two, to help peel the skin. Made this little hook guy. Kind of looks like what you would use to get your earwax out. 
And then the skin unzipper forged from a Model A fender bracket scrap that I found in the scrap. Love, love doing that. Um, works good. Jordan will have it for his rest of his life. Rest of my life! Rest of his life. Use the wonderful reciprocating machine. Little metal master guy. Very versatile tool. Um, was, didn't have to polish these and they turned out really, really good. So uh, that that is it. I mean, we did quite a bit in this video, so I, I hope it's not too long for you guys. I'll try and make it uh, make it interesting. But uh, yeah, that's where I'm gonna leave it. Got most of the bottom of the door done. Got to play with the profiles and uh, and linear stretch and shrink and stretch and kind of. If this was a, was a Ravel model, we'd be skill level. Two and a half for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It was, uh, it was a bit to get her done. But so stoked to be in the workshop. What's up, Josh? What's up? Josh Ball I'm Images, everybody. Uh, there, there you go. go. Oh, my God. Oh, 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 it looks so much better now with that collar fixed. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. Check out Custom Crew if you're interested. Five bucks a month. JapanceCustoms.com for merch. See you next time.